Welcome to Action Island presented by FanDuel. I'm Maria Marino and I'm joined by NBA betting experts Matt Moore, Jill Gallant and Joe Delera. We're all in the island spirit and we're going to work our way around the island with a pair of best bets from each of the guys as the Island Council votes on their favorite picks to include in a same game parlay for Heat 76ers. Before we do that, though, I feel like we need to just take a minute and talk about this matchup from a big picture standpoint. And Action Network senior writer, Matt Moore, I'm going to go to you first on this. I mean, pretty juicy matchup, Heat 76ers for a play game. Yeah, I mean, big stakes here. These two teams have experience with each other in the playoffs. They've obviously battled before. and be back trying to get his team into the playoffs to make sure that they can capitalize on him returning. You've got Miami, the reigning Eastern Conference champs, trying to go again from the play-in tournament to the finals. Jimmy Butler, Joel Embiid, all of the drama. This is going to be great. Can't wait to break it down. <laughs> Jill, quick thought. I'm just curious to see what kind of heat team we're going to see tonight because are we going to see play in heat last year where they were down double digits in the next game after losing the first one? Or are we going to see first and second round heat where they decimate top teams in the East? I'm leaning towards the heat, but again, I'm not, uh, we'll talk more about it as we go. Yeah, for sure. And by the way, Philly favored by five and a half, 76% of bets and 95% of money on Philly, according to the Action app. And Joe, I just want to follow up with you on this real quick too, because the winner will claim the seven seed and face the Knicks in the first round of the playoffs. If you're a Knicks fan, which of these teams do you want to see? Doesn't matter. Knicks and four. Look, the Knicks are a combined five and two against the Sixers and the Heat this season. So they've had really good success against both of these teams. They're just an absolute nails defensive team. They've been awesome. Brunson looks great. Uh, I do think that if you had to pick, you have to say that you want to play Miami. Like, I, you don't want to set up a matchup against Joel Embiid, who is the reigning MVP, was on his way to a second consecutive MVP, probably had he not gotten hurt. So uh, you have to say you don't want to play Phil. Philly, but I like the Knicks' chances against either team in this next round. Finally, someone talking some sense because I've been hearing all over sports media in New York that they don't want anything to do with the Heat. Like they're Crazy. still, like Knicks fans are still like you know having nightmares over last postseason. But by the way, the loser of of this game will face the winner of the Hawks Bulls game, which is later tonight. And a reminder, Action Island is presented by FanDuel. Sign up at FanDuel Sportsbook today and get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you bet $5. For new users in Arizona, Colorado, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, and Wyoming. New users in North Carolina will see receive $200 in bonus bets. Terms and conditions apply. It must be 21 plus. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, let's get into our best bets for Heat 76ers. Matt Moore, you're up first. All right, let's go ahead and get this out the way. First bet, heat money line. Zombie heat, what is dead may never die. Look, <laughs> look, I get it. The Sixers are a better team. <laughs> Brandon Anderson and I have written a lot about the value on Sixers futures. But in a one-game environment, I don't know that there's anybody better to have than Eric Spolstra with Jimmy Butler. They have been absolutely phenomenal. And yes, they lost the play-in tournament game last year. That was last year. This is this year. Jimmy Butler goes on and it has a slam interview where he's talking about nobody wants to see us. Like he's back in that mode. Like he is absolutely back in that zone. Meanwhile, Bam out of bio when he faces Joel Embiid, he is nine and four, including the playoffs when he faces Joel Embiid, regular season or playoffs. Adebayo has had the number for slowing down Embiid, but more especially, Eric Spolstra has. It's that zone defense. It's the way that the Heat bring their doubles. It's how they're able to switch up how they play zone to coordinate exactly what they need to. They'll play some matchup zone here. They will disrupt Embiid, and that will mess up the Sixers offense. Is this a better coaching matchup now that you have Nick Nurse? Absolutely. But I get Eric Spolstra here as a dog. Furthermore, what's the more fun matchup? Celtics... <laughs> or Celtics Sixers. It's obviously Celtics Heat. 
Miami's not going to give us that. They don't want good things for us. They want <laughs> us to suffer. So the Heat zombies are going to go ahead and get this done tonight. Heat money line. Second pick, Tyler Hero. 20 plus points. I love this pick. I love this bet. Sixers play primarily drop coverage with Joel Embiid. They're going to back off in pick and roll coverage. They're going to drop Joel Embiid a little bit, and they drop more now that he is physically limited coming back from that knee injury. So what does that mean? That means open mid-range jumpers. Guess who takes the most mid-range jumpers on the heat of pick and roll? Tyler Hero. Tyler Hero was not around for last season's playoff run. He's got a lot of motivation to prove that he wasn't, because he was gone, wasn't why they made this run. And he's gone over this number in the last three meetings versus the Sixers. I think this matchup is fantastic. For him to be able to score, I'll take Tyler Hero 20 plus points or Heat money line because they're the zombie Heat. Coming in hot with the Flamingo float. Okay, let's make a vote, everybody. <laughs> All right, guys, show them. Ah, uh, see, oh. Jill's not a coward. Hey, hey, listen. If Maria this... Marino, I am I disappointed in you. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. I love, you know, Jimmy Butler as much as anybody. If this was Heat plus five and a half, I'd be all about it. You know, forgive me for being a, a little more cautious, but Jill, why are you okay with the, the Heat money line? Well, I think both of these bets are good. I, I think Harrow, obviously, I think is a very good bet, but I just, I can't fade the Heat in this spot. I can't fade the Heat in a playoff scenario. It's just too dangerous. Plus, I'm a little greedy. I want this. I want the same game parlay to pay a little more. That's a oh, plus 180 money line okay, as opposed okay. to a minus 135. So I'd rather go for the higher payout. Heat money line. Let's go. Okay, but Joe, I do want to find out why you liked Hero 20 plus. I mean, I like I bet Philly instantly when this game <laughs> opened. So like I'm not. I don't. I don't want any part of this Miami money line. I like Hero. I think Matt's analysis is good. Uh, Matt always really nails like the schematic things, the defensive things that teams like to do, and how that opens up things for other players. So when I saw the way that he described it, Tyler Hero twenty plus points makes a lot of sense, and I know he's plenty motivated for this spot. So I like the twenty plus points. The flamingo judges you, Maria Maria. <laughs> good. The flamingo <laughs> judges you. I feel shamed. Um, okay, let's let's move it on to Jill Galant's best bets. Take it away. All right, so I'm going to take Duncan Robinson to go over one and a half three pointers. Uh, it's around minus one thirty to minus one thirty five, and I think this line is too low. This should likely be around two and a half over under, with it around maybe minus one fifteen on either side. Mainly just because of the volume. I mean, he's averaging just over two and a half three point makes just since the All Star break. He's cleared this in thirteen of eighteen games in that span. That's a seventy two percent hit rate. And Maria, you know, when we talk about three point props, I always look about where all this shot volume is coming from. Over seventy percent of all of Duncan Robinson's shots are coming from three point. Also, no Terry Rozier, a little bit more opportunity on the perimeter. And if you go back and look at the last four games where Terry Rozier was out and Duncan Robinson was in, there's four games stretched there from February 13th to the 26th. Robinson was lights out. He shot 17 for 32 from three point, cleared it in three or four games. Again, I just think this line is too low. Duncan Robinson over one and a half three pointers is my first bet. The second bet, we're going to go to the Sixers side. And I'm going to take Tobias Harris to have 15 or more points. So over 14 and a half points for the year. Tobias averages just over 17 points per game. He scored 15 or more points in 63% of all games this season. And when you look at how he has been scoring, he's been pretty consistent this year in comparison to maybe last year when he was more of the whipping boy in this offense. He only had one month this year where he didn't average at least 15 points a game. And since Joel, e Joel Embiid has come back, he's actually cleared this in three or four games with Embiid back in the lineup. Also, one other thing about Tobias, historically, has seen his scoring kind of pick up in the playoffs. Last year, for example, cleared this in eight of 11 playoff games. 
Also, I think the defensive matchup, you're likely going to see him match up maybe a little bit more with Tyler Harrow and Robinson and maybe even a little bit of Jovic. And I think all three of those are a little subpar defensively. I think he could take advantage of that. And for what it's worth, in the lone game that he did play against the Heat, it was back on Christmas Day, scored 27 points on them. So Tobias Harris over 14 and a half points is my second bet for this game. I like it. Well, it's that time. Let's put it to a vote. All right, show them. Hey, Toby. <laughs> Clean sweep for Toby. Love it. Love Over. it. The sweep. Okay. Matt Moore, going to you here. Why did you like Harris over? Uh, I really like the Harris prop because of what you talked about with Jovic. Like, that's a really good cap here. That I think Jovic will spend a lot of time on him. He's a smaller defender. Toby tends to really start to get loose when he's able to bully smaller guys. He's got such strong moves because he's a veteran that understands how to get to the get to the basket. They're going to key in a lot more on the other guys. They're going to have to load up to stop Tyrese Maxey in transition. That's going to open up opportunities for Toby on the perimeter. The other thing here is, I, I'll be honest with you, I don't like the Robinson prop. One, they've used Robinson way more as a secondary playmaker. And two, remember what I talked about? where they're going to play a bunch of drop coverage by the Sixers. Guess why you do that? You do that to keep your guys home on the perimeter so you mm. don't give up threes. You're trying to protect the rim and keep the three-point volume down. Miami does not want to try and get into a three-point contest in this one with them. They're not going to try and gear for that. And the Sixers know that if the Heat don't hit threes, they're not going to be able to keep pace with the offense. So I think the Sixers are going to stay home on those shooters. Don't like the Robinson prop. Love Harris, though, over 14 and a half. For what it's worth, I think the part of Jill's analysis that I liked about Robinson was the um, case study without Rozier in the lineup. And also, I think if you like the Heat to win, <clears throat> Matt, or, you know, at least cover, like, I feel like Duncan's going to have to hit a couple threes. But also on the flip side to what you were saying that, like, there's going to be so much attention, like, you, you got to figure out Embiid, you got to figure out Maxi. Like, I feel like there's going to have to be somebody else that steps up for the Sixers. And that leaves Joe Delara's best bets. Take it away, Joe. All right. So we're getting a little spicy here. My <laughs> first best bet is Joel Embiid under uh, 20 and a half, 29 and a half points. Uh, he's gone under in nine of his last 10 games against Miami. He's only averaging 22.1 points per game against Bam Adebayo in his career. And he has not had a 30-point game in the last three seasons against Bam. So this is like, it's, a lot of it has to do with matchup. A lot of it has to do with scheme. Spo really does sell out and say like, hey, somebody else can beat us, but it's not going to be you, Joel. And I really do think that in this particular matchup where, you know, we're seeing uh, it's a one, it's a winner go home or a winner go to the, go to see the Celtics in the next round uh, type of opportunity here. I do think that Spo is going to pull out all the stops, all the tricks in the bag to really try to slow down Joel Embiid. So I like him to go on under the 29 and a half points. Very nice. Very spicy. Not not quite so spicy as the, the heat money line off the top, but <laughs> we're okay with it. What else? Uh, I also like Buddy Heald to go over one and a half threes. Uh, he's hit this in eight of his last 10 games against Miami. Uh, Miami tends to allow spot up shooters due to the amount of zone defense that they like to play. And it kind of ties into why I like the Embiid under. I think this might be a little bit of a tougher game for Embiid to score. And I think that he probably does wind up dishing a bit to the perimeter. So when I was looking at this game, I, when they made that trade for Buddy Heald, it seemed to me to be for these types of games for like to give a little bit of an outlet spot, to get take a little bit of pressure off of a guy like Joel Embiid and to take a little bit more pressure off Tyrese Maxey so they have a knockdown shooter on the perimeter. The one and a half threes line for a guy like Buddy Heald, if he, if he gets hot, he can easily make three, four in this game. Uh, I do like him to go over the one and a half. I think that he's going to have enough opportunities to make uh, to make two. And honestly, even if he only took two shots, Buddy's such a good shooter, he could he could still make the two from three. Very good. All right. Time to vote. All right, show it. 
Oh, okay. A little bit of dissension. Um, so I'll go to Jill first on this. Why were you on board uh, as I was with Embiid's points under? Sure. So I was already, I've already bet this as a single bet and it was already at 30 and a half. The market is already moving on this. This is why it's moved down to 29 and a half. Um, and also, if you look historically, Joe brought it up since the start of the 2020, 2021 regular season, Joel Embiid has played the Heat 13 times, nine regular season games and four playoff games. He has scored 30 or more points in only two of those games. And the two games where he did score that, Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo didn't play. That was back in January of 21 and January of 22. So I think with Jimmy and Bam out there, again, I just don't think Joel Embiid is going to get to 30 points, especially because I'm not fully convinced that he's fully healthy again. He might get a little winded. I'm not sure he could play more than 30 minutes. I think that's the key too. I mean, the Bam Embiid matchup and the numbers and the history like plays into it for sure. And then on top of it, like, He's he's definitely not fully healthy. I mean, he's still Embiid, but um, Matt Moore, you did vote for the healed over one and a half threes. Quick thought on that. Yeah, so, I mean, I think one, from a strategic standpoint, if we do the healed over, it's more counter-directional, so it might get a little bit of value on that, whereas Embiid under, like, a little bit, a little bit of a different matter there. The other thing I'll say here is, uh, he's right. He hasn't gone over 30. What did he have back there on April 4th of this year? Oh, that's right, 29. 29, but he didn't play as many minutes. Um, not, also, not 30. I, I just think that, that this is a different year for Embiid in the Sixers. And while I do like Heat Moneyline because they defy logic and reason, uh, from a logic and reason standpoint, I, I do think that Embiid's going to have a monster game here. I don't know how this, the Heat are going to get this done, but I just kind of feel like they are. And I also think that uh, Embiid is going to continue to kind of find solves. A big question mark on this number, though, the officiating. That's also what's going to be really tough about this. If Embiid gets the kind of soft calls that he has gotten even since he came back with what's supposed to be tougher officiating, Jimmy's really struggled with it. Embiid's still gotten to the line. If he gets to the line tonight, he will continue to do so. He'll get into the bonus and go over this prop. I think this one going to be close. I'll take healed on the over one and a half threes. But I do want to follow up real quick on that. Maybe, Joe, you can speak to it. Like, do you think there's something to Embiid since he's come back um, settling more for, like, little jumpers as opposed to, like, driving more and finishing at the rim and maybe not getting as many calls that way? Uh, I think what I have noticed is it's a little bit more on the defensive side of the ball, to be honest with you. I think that he, like Matt kind of alluded to earlier, they're playing much more drop uh, it, and it's a little bit more so than, you know, him coming up at the level even uh, to any degree. Like they're, they're really a little bit more committed to the drop. His rebounding has gone down a bit as well. Uh, and his turnovers have gone up. Uh, so I do think that there is like, you know, there's always the chance to, you know, with an under, uh, you know, you never want to want to wish an injury on somebody, but if Embiid needs to go to the locker room to get retaped or anything and it takes a couple minutes out of his rotation those are all things that kind of can go towards it so um unders always have more outs and uh i this think is this like is like the this... anthony davis logic yeah Sorry. like i just think it's a low i think it's going to be a slow paced game too both these teams play pretty slow so uh i that's that's also why i'm on the under as well you all like the and beat under but you're not brave enough to take heat money line <laughs> action for Nintendo judges you don't I, I don't I don't group. need the judgment. I don't. I don't need it. <laughs> we'll have to uh, recap our parlay, though, because we have all three legs. So let's just do a little recap here. We got Tyler Hero to go over 20 points, 20 plus points to be exact. Tobias Harris over 14 and a half points. Joel Embiid under 29 and a half points. And you're getting odds of about plus 427 right now on that. So not too shabby. And guess what, guys? We got a bonus bet from yours truly. You ready? Let's go. All right. So, you know, I'm venturing into some props. I feel like you guys should be proud of me. Um, and I'm going Kyle Lowry. Oh, Lowry over five Ooh. and a half points. And I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> um, so he's cleared this in six of his last eight games. Uh, one of those being against Philly. And one of the ones that he didn't hit was just like a weird blowout, you know, win over the Nets, like last game of the season. So it doesn't even really count. Um, he's actually shooting at a higher clip with Philly than he did in Miami. He's over 40% from three. And this is what he did in that last matchup. He had a couple of threes, 
And um, I think he could do that again. And let's not forget, I don't want to call this a revenge spot, but I mean, talk about knowing your personnel. And Kyle Lowry is a super smart player. He's already one of those guys that you just know gets up for these big games. He's got the confidence. He's got that competitive edge as it is. Now he's going up against his former team. I feel like this is a gift for Nick Nurse. So I could see Kyle Lowry being one of those guys that just makes enough plays and is just a little bit of an X factor. I thought five and a half was um, not a bad number for that. So that's what I like. Kyle Lowry over five and a half. Um, I'll get a quick reaction. Jill, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, my first instinct was looking at Kyle Lowry threes because he did hit two against the Heat there. Mm -hmm. um, but I think uh, this is a little bit more of a safer approach in case he's getting fouled, you know, at the end of a sh uh, like closer to an end of a quarter. And maybe they're in the bonus. There's other ways for him more outs to get to six points instead of taking over one and a half threes at plus 150 or whatever else. So, yeah, I love this bet. I had the same thought as you, and that's what I did, too. felt like this was a little bit of a safer play. But if we were to parlay that in addition to our three-leg parlay, we're looking at odds of about plus 922 if you're mm. so interested. But look, I don't want to leave the island, as I said the last time we did the show, because this is so fun, even with the Flamingo judgment. Um, but <laughs> all right, I'm going to say goodbye now. Goodbye to the Flamingo. This has been Action Island presented by FanDuel Sportsbook. So for Matt Moore, Jill Gallant, and Joe Delara, and our entire NBA crew, I'm Maria Marino. Thanks for watching and enjoy tonight's game.